Okay. Well, I suppose we can start now. So once again, uh, good, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, in, well, the, it depends on the time of day that you, <laughs> if your time zone, uh, or the place where you're following us. Um, I'm Antonio Teixeira. I'm um, uh, a, prof um, a professor at the Open University of Portugal, and I'm also a senior uh, at Eden, Eden Senior Fellow. And it's really a, a pleasure and an honor to welcome you uh, to this session. Uh, actually, it's the last session of the Eden Open Education Week 2022, and so it's a kind of a, a special one. Uh, it's a celebration uh, of the Open Education Week. It's a celebration of Eden and the Eden community. It's a celebration also of Europe, and it's a, a celebration of our common heritage. So in a sense, um, we have a lot to celebrate today. Um, as, as, you, as you know, uh, throughout the week, the Open Education Week had been uh, focusing the, 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 the discussions on several aspects of uh, what is open education and what is uh, the practice, open uh, the practice of uh, open learning and uh, open education. And this uh, one of the most important aspects involved in open education is the flexibility, um, apart from the openness, of course. Uh, and uh, the, one of the main contributions he has, uh, open education has um, done, uh, achieved in the last. Uh, last decades has been to increase the connection, the interconnection uh, between the formal, non-formal and informal uh, learning. And in this sense, uh, the, the interconnection between uh, um, formal education, especially in higher education, but also uh, uh, in other uh, levels of, uh, of, education, of the education systems with uh, non-formal uh, education, uh, museum education is one of them, uh, has been increased and this uh, this has been, in a way, promoted and fostered by open education. And how museum education has been uh, embracing open education uh, in, the, in the last years, and in particular, uh, in the context of the, of the, it has been accelerated in the context of the pandemic. Well, but uh, before uh, we, uh, we, we open uh, the discussion, let me just say uh, uh, also uh, another, another word. Uh, related to the um, to the to the standing of Euro Europe uh, of, of Eden in this uh, uh, special historical moment in Europe, as you know, we are living uh, well. We're just living one uh, difficult period because of, of COVID nineteen, and now we're, it seems we're entering another difficult year, uh, period because of the war in Europe. Uh, Eden stands for a, a set of values. It was founded on a number of values uh, that relate to the European common heritage, uh, values that relate with openness, with uh, freedom, with, um, uh, with inclusion, uh, with dialogue, and with cooperation. And uh, in, 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 in that sense, Eden was, as it's founded in 1991, ex exactly in a historical moment in Europe where everything was possible and we thought that um, uh, a new age of cooperation, collaboration has started in Europe. Uh, Eden was, well, one of the, uh, actually one of the examples and one of the, ex the, the expressions of, the, of that feeling and that movement in Europe. And so Eden uh, stands with those values, keeps standing with those values. And in this particular moment, we celebrate them uh, because they're probably more needed than ever. Uh, and this relates also with, with museums and museum education. Uh, museums are also uh, the, an, an, um, an important institution in our way of life, in our way of, uh, in our civilization, uh, let's say it, uh, because they're also um, a place where we celebrate, preserve, and develop our common heritage. And so it's in the combination, in the crossing of those two uh, important um, uh, aspects, of course, um, the set of values that, uh, that make us uh, uh, Europeans and also uh, what represents uh, the contribution of, op of, op um, of open education and of museum education that we've um, set the discussion for today. Uh, and, and, and the webinar, as it was announced, 
uh, as this uh, main topic uh, for the discussion, how open education is contributing and will con continue to contribute to the digital transformation of the museum learning experience, exactly in that sense of uh, um, uh, helping promote uh, uh, the widen of uh, widen uh, participation opportunities, having promote inclusion, having promote uh, democracy uh, and freedom uh, in, in that sense, uh, and, and well being uh, as in, in that sense as well. Uh, to, to well to uh, speak about these topics, we have a wonderful panel of um, experts and friends as well. Uh, which I'll start introducing uh, just now. Um, first of all, we'll have uh, doc Dr. Antonella Poche. Well, she's a, she's a full professor at the University of Modern Reggio Emilia in Italy. She's a Eden Senior Fellow, as you know, and she currently holds the, uh, the role of a uh, uh, full professor in experimental pedag pedagogy at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia. And she's also uh, directing Intellect, which is the Center for Research into Museum Education, Wellbeing, and Teaching Technology. She's also the head of uh, the, the postgraduate courses Heritage Education Digital Technologies and Museum Education General Aspects, plus the postgraduate course Advanced Studies in Museum Education. Uh, well, she coordinates national units within European project frameworks, and she has been chairing international academic committees dealing with distance learning as well. Uh, welcome, Antonella. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, we have also... Okay. It's a pleasure for me. <laughs> we have also uh, Dr. Covadonga uh, Rodrigo San Juan. Well, she's, she's there. Uh, she's also a full professor at the uh, National uh, University for Distance Education in, in Spain, UNED, as it's most, most commonly known, uh, which is uh, based in Madrid. She, uh, she has a PhD in telecommunications engineering from the Polytechnical uh, University of Madrid, and she's the currently deputy director of research transfer and innovation at uh, the School of Informatics uh, at UNED. Uh, well, uh, she has a very long curriculum, but you can, you can access uh, in, in the web page, but let me just point out that she has uh, held various academic positions uh, namely being Pro Vice Chancellor of Technology, Deputy Vice Director of uh, Applied Technology and Study Centers, and Director of the Research Chair of Digital Inclusion. This is a very important uh, feature <laughs> of her curriculum, and she has done a wonderful job uh, uh, running this chair. This chair is, is funded by the Vodafone Spain Foundation. Um, she has she, her research focus on accessibility, interoperability, and recommendation aspects in autonomous access to educational resources, repositories, e-learning platforms, audiovisual platforms, and mobile applications. She's also a member of ANOR in quality standards in e-learning. She's very, uh, she has a, a lot of expertise in, in uh, quality assurance, and not just expertise, also uh, a lot of practice in conducting research and, and evaluation. Uh, and namely, one of the, the projects she has been uh, more uh, connected with is the e-excellence seal and open and labeling for MOOCs that is um, uh, in the framework of uh, EADTU, also our, um, our uh, other European association uh, related to this topic. She's an Eden Fellow and uh, a member of the IE Education Chapter and the GoGN Network on Open Educational Resources. Uh, let, well, Kovadonga, uh, let me also introduce you Antonia Liguri. She is a senior lecturer at the uh, Longborough University in the UK. And this is also uh, another form of inclusion. The UK is still part of Europe. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Uh, and Eden is a proof of that. Uh, Antonia is a lecturer in, uh, a senior lecturer in applied storytelling at the Logbury, uh, uh, Logbury uh, University. Her academic background is in history and computer science in this combination. And uh, since 2008, uh, um, 2008, she has been involved in a variety of international research projects. Um, to develop, aiming at developing tools and methods to foster innovation education. Uh, mostly exploring the role of storytelling in today's digital world, investigating uh, and trial ways of using digital storytelling as, storytelling as a participatory methodology for interdisciplinary research. 
Um, she has been, in the past seven years, she's, uh, her research has been focusing on three main strands, applied storytelling on environmental issues, digital storytelling in well, cultural or heritage education, storytelling and urban design. More recently, she has joined HEART, which is Healing, Education, and Animation Research Therapy. And she has been exploring digital storytelling as a therapeutic intervention as well. Well, before moving to the UK, she's a, a Italian by birth, <laughs> and she was the coordinator of the multimedia department at the BAIC, BAICR Sistema Cultura uh, in Italy, a consortium of five cultural institutions with the aim of contributing to the enhancement of historical cultural and her heritage through the use of innovative methodologies. Finally, uh, last but not least, <laughs> we have uh, Angeles uh, Sanchez, um, uh, she's a senior lecturer in the, uh, at the Open uh, at the National uh, Distance uh, Education University in Spain as well, UNED, and she's the the, the chair, uh, well, the director of the chair in distance education at UNED. Uh, well, Angeles, uh, besides being also a, a very good friend, she's a, a great expert in um, in uh, open and distance education. She has a whole uh, she has a PhD in psychology. And uh, uh, but but she's she lectures and because of that she lectures at the Faculty of Psychology uh, at UNED. Um, apart from the from the chair, which has already mentioned, she has a long expertise in methodological methodological innovation in open education, and she has um, uh, served in many positions at her university. Um, um, as such, she has been the director of the Institute for Distance Education at UNED also um, the, uh, the Deputy Director for Academic Staff Training at UNED as well. Um, she was also the Director of the Ibero Ibero-American Course for Distance Education, and she's a specialist, uh, an expert in OER, um, having also coordinated the first Latin American MOOC uh, called Ibero-Virtual UNED, Basic Digital Competencies. Um, she has also uh, collaborated in uh, development, production design and development of many other MOOC courses. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she's a member of the UNED Group of Innovation Smart, CG, Smart and Adaptive Learning and Teaching Crowding Group. Um, and she has coordinated uh, a, number of, uh, a, num a number of uh, also uh, other uh, innovation projects at UNED and uh, in the framework of uh, uh, European uh, projects as well. She is the chair of the student support field of expertise of the Empower project at EADTU and a member of the team of reviewers of EADTU as well uh, for the e-excellence um, project and label. Well, welcome Angelis as well. And now uh, starting the discussion, uh, we'll uh, first um, have a look on two, um, well, three actually, three uh, particular projects which are significant uh, in crossing these, um, these fields of open education, uh, promoting inclusion and, and, and accessibility, and also um, the development of museum education. Uh, and I'll start uh, by giving the floor to uh, Antonella uh, for a, a short presentation on the Inclusive Memory Project, that uh, yes. a European funded project that is has just started this year. Antonella, you have a floor. Thank, thank you so much, Antonio. Thanks to Eden. Uh, you know how dear Eden is to me. So I'm so glad uh, to be here with you, as you said, with uh, this large community of friends. And uh, the panel as well is made of very, very dear uh, friends. So it's, it's really, it's really nice to be with all of you, especially as you were saying in this moment of uh, uh, fear and uh, uh, really uh, difficult uh, time we have been living. Anyway, I don't want to, to steal uh, too much time, but just uh, uh, to introduce uh, briefly um, the, um, um, the project. Um, I'll try to, to be uh, very, very brief. 
so as you said, the project is um, is called the Inclusive Memory. Actually, we uh, focus on, on uh, um, a specific uh, perspective that is that of uh, um, the use of museums for for well being and health. Uh, through the creation of a new shared uh, memory. Uh, the partnership uh, is uh, uh, made uh, and composed... Sorry, Sorry yeah. for interrupting. Can you uh, put the, 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 the... Yeah, make the, the, the full okay. screen. Yeah. I see the full screen. So let's start again. Thank let's you. See what Thank happens? You. Okay, yes. so the inclusive Sorry. memory... Uh, and the title that I just read. So the focus is on well-being uh, and health um, through the use of museums, of museum objects uh, in particular. Um, as you can see here, the partnership is made uh, uh, by the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia, which I represent, Zetema Progetto Cultura, which is a company working with museums in the Rome area. Uh, in particular, so these are the two Italian partners, um, Università Nazionale d'Educazione a Distanza, UNED, and we have two main representatives here participating also in the project, Università di Aberta uh, um, from Lisbon, and of course Antonio um, knows it very well, and is part of the partnership as well, Ascoli Islands, um, University in in Iceland, which can boast an interesting uh, track record and an interesting experience in the use of museums uh, to fight um, uh, health problems, especially in elderly. Uh, people. Um, Interalia, uh, that is a non-profit organization in Greece, in, in Athens in particular, uh, and they, their work uh, through heritage, of course, is addressed to um, promote inclusion, especially uh, for uh, migrants and uh, people, um, asylum seekers, actually. And then the Instituto Catalá de la Salud, based in uh, Barcelona, in Spain, um, where um, they, they develop the objectives of training uh, physicians and, and uh, um, caregivers uh, so, you know, everyone who is involved in, in care, in medical care, uh, to um, support and to, um, of course, um, facilitate the healing of people in, in, in bad health. So uh, this is the partnership and all together with different kind of uh, uh, profiles, uh, we try to uh, work on the promotion and the building of a common shared uh, memory uh, realized uh, through a museum-based social inclusive system. Uh, the uh, words, the keywords that are guiding us through the whole process are the ones that you can see uh, here um, uh, highlighted in purple, art, health and well-being. Uh, so uh, the idea uh, is based on the cooperation between different kinds of higher education institutions, uh, uh, the ones that of course are, are part of the consortium organizing and managing the project, but also others that we uh, we hope we could reach through uh, events like the one uh, we are we are carrying out today, um, health and social care institutions and uh, museums. Um, it is exactly this strategy that we would like to uh, perform over uh, the project in order to make these museum experiences. Uh, um, really valuable in order to facilitate inclusion, accessibility, and uh, uh, especially health and well-being. Um, there are different issues uh, there. Um, they, um, 
need to use, as you were saying at the very beginning, Antonio, uh, museums at um, places with no borders, actually, places where, where uh, the, um, the testimony that the, of human civilization uh, is, uh, is there. Uh, and where every one of us can recognize their own uh, history, creating a new memory uh, all together. Uh, this concept is at, at the basis of our project. So the idea, again, is to create um, a new uh, social uh, system um, where of course, different new uh, teaching and learning um, paths, new teaching and learning itineraries are uh, built, are built also with the help of technology, um, are built with the help of a critical use of technology. Uh, so our um, partnership is working exactly on um, this uh, concept where um, every uh, kind of uh, teaching and learning proposal, every kind of uh, involvement uh, proposal can be supported by technology, but uh, the technology should be thought, tested, and addressed to the different aims that we try to pursue over uh, the project. Uh, here you have a series of results that we need to reach uh, um, by the end of the project. Uh, every one of us, of course, is responsible for one of the uh, results, uh, but uh, um, the concept here, the idea is to have all the participants taking um, direct and active action uh, through all uh, the different project uh, results. As you might see, I'm not going to read the whole, the whole slide, but as you might see uh, from a very quick uh, reading, um, uh, the idea is to reflect on the use of technology for inclusive educational activities within the museum context, um, but uh, the uh, use of uh, blended teaching and learning activities, the use of MOOC, um, the use of open uh, resources is at the core of our uh, action and uh, uh, of the project in its entire develop development. So, um, of course, our focus is uh, consistent with um, the topic that we are going to discuss today. Uh, there will be different workshops, so whoever is interested, please uh, keep in touch with us, but I, I think that through Eden, through the association, we will be able to involve many different, uh, um, many different participants, uh, many different subjects interested in our work. We will be in, in different places, of course, within the countries involved in the project but also at Eden's uh, conference, uh, conferences. So we'll have the chance to meet with you all when, when the different um, conferences will take place over the project uh, time. Um, respected, mm, as far as the, the outcomes are, are concerned, as you can see again, uh, we'll work uh, as far as technology is uh, is concerned again um, in different uh, ways. We will uh, focus on the use of OERs and MOOCs, of course, but we will also work on the technology that could be um, uh, um, more useful within the museum um, framework, within the museum 
structures uh, to uh, have more uh, fruitful interactions uh, among the different uh, participants or users, uh, as I like to call those accessing the museum. Of course, we will work on, on video storytelling and on the um, realization of a permanent um, database uh, where uh, video storytelling are stored. And here we have one of the most important experts all over the world as regards storytelling and Antonia. Uh, and so she will, she will tell us more. Uh, we will also focus uh, on the use of assessment uh, tools in order to measure uh, the impact of the different activities that we are going to develop through the project. Uh, I think this is a very, very urgent, very important point because we need to know where we are going. So we will share also with uh, all of you the, the tools that we are going to develop. And um, we will work through a specific methodology that is the handy methodology, which uh, is consistent with what I was saying related to the use of a new model for assessment and impact measurement, uh, because as you can see, it's based on um, uh, a series of actions, uh, analysis, design, development, implementation, but always related to the evaluation procedures uh, uh, carried out. The other aspect which is important to understand the um, issue of inclusion and how inclusion is uh, um, basically developed uh, uh, throughout the project is the ABCD approach, which is a, an approach that, as you can see uh, uh, from uh, um, the acronym, is asset-based community development. So it's related to an approach that uh, works on what is already within the community and tries to uh, value it at, uh, at its most. I won't go deeper here because uh, time I know is very limited. So I thank you for your attention. And of course, we are all there available for, for uh, um, your questions. I, I'm really sorry, uh, you know, I've been sorry so much for Brexit uh, uh, for many different reasons. Uh, many friends and colleagues uh, we have been cooperating for many years uh, are there and Antonia is one of them. Um, and this project uh, was uh, started actually with uh, uh, some UK partners uh, that could not be part of this, of this group, but we managed in you know, working anyway uh, with them under many other different op opportunities, occasions. And uh, I'll be so glad if uh, Antonia and others, uh, actually we have already two evaluators from UK, um, will anyway be part of our action with, through the various different objectives that we and activities that we are going to develop. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Antonella. Um, and now I'll give the floor to Covadonga and to Angeles. I, I suppose we'll start by Angeles uh, for uh, for a presentation on two uh, other projects. So we had a project that is just starting, and so we we had already this um, understanding of what what is the the structure of the project and what will deliver. And now we'll see two examples of pro on ongoing projects projects that had already produced. Um, uh, um, many outputs and ha uh, have a focus on also on uh, inclu uh, inclusion and accessibility. So uh, we, um, uh, Antonio explored this idea of the museums with no borders, museums which the new kind of museums which are, do not impose a, a story, do not impose a, 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 a written memory, uh, um, but basically are spaces for uh, collaboratively um, uh, discover a common story. And this is something that uh, uh, is, in a, in a sense, also explored by these two other projects. Angeles and Kova, you have the floor. Uh, 
Uh, Antonella, can you stop sharing, please? Okay, thank you. Well, in our case, I think I'm going to start uh, with our presentation. We are going to share the presentation uh, from uh, Unet's uh, side. And the first thing is to say that, uh, well, it is a pleasure to me to be with all of you this afternoon. Uh, Antonio, thank you very much for the invitation and to be with uh, our friends and colleagues uh, to share about this interesting multidisciplinary um, topic. So uh, let's see if I can share. Can you see now the presentation? Yes, can you put it on full screen? Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, okay so, um, well, um, the topic here we want to uh, to talk about is uh, in which areas UNED is working on on this on this field. So it's uh, this idea of opening up art and museums for all. So the first thing, let me introduce our university because I think it is important to see our uh, scope in this uh, field also of open education and distance education. We are just um, in the year, on our 50th year of experience of, uh, and life. So we are celebrating our 50 year. And this is a very special year for all of us. So um, we are um, the only public university in, in Spain at the national level with um, online um, learning, but supported by a network of local centers all around the country and also abroad. And we have been always been a distance education university. And as such, we can say that we are a mega university and with more than 200,000 students. And um, in, this, uh, in this way, these uh, undergraduate students um, well have uh, reached this uh, employ employability ranking and the high uh, top employability ranking in 2020. But we have very special students. I mean, they are adult and part-time students and, uh, such as in the, uh, the other distance education university. Uh, um, and we also have been working not only in degrees and masters and PhD, but uh, since many years ago, we are working in lifelong learning programs. And we opened uh, also our, um, our uh, offer um, in uh, 2008 with the Open Courseware platform and then uh, to MOOCs in a, a Open Unit since 2012. So we have been working in open um, education uh, since then. Mm, the other thing and we have to stress is that we are a university that are um, very much focused on those people that uh, have a special needs, such, such as those that with um, disabilities and those that are in prison. So uh, these are part of the social values of our university, that is to give the opportunity to um, uh, get to through uh, university studios, higher education studios to everyone. We are members uh, of the most um, valued uh, distance education uh, organizations and online organizations such as the ADTU, Eden, ISAD in the uh, Latin America field and is ISD. And we have the ADTU quality label. That's, that's um, I mean, for saying that we are uh, very much um, uh, compromised with, uh, as I said, with this uh, uh, objective of uh, giving the opportunity to, um, uh, uh, as, as I mean, as the, also as the um, um, number four of the uh, sustainable uh, development goals uh, says that we have to give the opportunity to as much people as we can to reach higher levels of education. But coming to this point of being open and inclusive, we have to think about um, the theories and facts uh, of our university in uh, diversity. And so we have to say that we have um, the, uh, um, regarding the, the country, I mean, in Spain, we have the 40% of students with disabilities, with functional diversity in Spain, and the 4% of our students are around 9,000 in our university are people with uh, this functional diversity. Um, also, when we talk about um, open resources, 16% of users uh, declare they have functional diversity as well. So uh, these are people that uh, need, um, well, uh, a special um, attention and actions to make them, um, or to, to make the, all the resources, the didactic resources that are available for them. Um, 
Well, so our university and especially the team that uh, COVA leads uh, is very much focused on universal accessibility and uh, social, um, I mean, uh, inc inclusion uh, in our field. But uh, I don't want to forget that we are also um, um, focused on, as I said before, to those people that are in prison, because also not only uh, talking about higher education, but also talking about uh, uh, the, the accessibility to art or to museums is something we had to take into uh, consideration when we uh, think about um, this, um, the necessities of these people. So this is our team uh, in, in ad hoc. This is a group uh, uh, in the university, although we also belong to different groups of research and innovation, but we uh, gathered together in this in ad hoc group, uh, also um, supported by uh, the UNESCO Chair in Distance Education in the university. And we are a multidisciplinary team uh, because we have gathered together the expertise and experience in open and distance education on the psychological side and well-being engagement and on the technological side, all those things that are related to inclusions such as technology acceptance, disability, digital humanities, natural language processing, and um, overall the quality assurance of all that. So coming to the point of the museums, uh, uh, well, as UNESCO says, has just very recently appointed after the pandemic, uh, this is even a more important issue because museums has, uh, have shown over the pandemic the relevance and the goodness they can um, give to the population, the global population, and as it has been shown during the pandemic. So uh, even now, UNESCO is um, calling to bring museums of the world together to reflect on the future. So I think it is a very important issue now to reflect about all those things that are, we, are talking, uh, we are talking about now. Our, uh, our group um, concerning the two projects that have been developed uh, in, in uh, concerning or regarding museums are two projects uh, focused on open museums, but making them more inclusive through digital resources, resources and digital education. So uh, the first thing, you know, the first idea was making museums open and inclusive. So that means to reinventing museums so that no one is uh, left aside or left out. But that means, uh, well, on the one hand, that we all know that uh, museums are becoming more open and open, even more after the pandemic, to the world because of the digital possibilities and the digital resources opening all uh, the, uh, their, um, uh, the, the resources they have. So uh, we, we can now um, get access to uh, the best museums in all over the world uh, in a digital way because of all the open resources they have put, but sometimes they are not really open. I mean, sometimes you have to, all, have to pay for this uh, visual uh, visit to the museums. But anyway, I mean, as um, the International Journal of the Inclusive Museums has stressed, uh, they say, well, now, nowadays, I mean, uh, there is no collectible object and no experience that cannot be digitalized. So it can be offered um, through digital means of representation. Uh, but on the other hand, well, we can open our, our, digitally, uh, our digitalized uh, resources in, in, the, um, in the museums, for instance, but that doesn't mean that they are inclusive. So the thing here, the thing that uh, this group has been working on is to make this, this um, digital object and digi digitally um, um, digitalized uh, um, uh, art um, uh, resources uh, to be more inclusive and accessible to everyone. The second thing we are uh, focused on, and it is more related to the current project with An Antonella, is um, the, uh, the, the, the role that art has on health and well-being, which is another approach. I mean, that is very much related to the previous one, but that concerns also the whole population. So in this sense, uh, well, we all know, and, and the psychological research stress uh, very much that the arts um, keep uh, and, and promotes resilience and, and flourishing in, in uh, psychological growth in, in people. And this is something that we have um, a lot of research behind uh, all of that. And on my side, because I'm a psychologist and I work on the side of positive psychology, um, the appreciation of beauty and excellence is one of the 24 uh, human strengths that contribute to flourishing, to human flourishing, happiness, and well-being. So uh, museums have uh, a lot of... Um, 
to do in this sense. And uh, a very recent article stresses that art museum visitation, really, we have um, uh, evidence that it increases the well-being and reduces ill-being in, in human beings. Um, also, well, there is a lot of things going around this issue. And um, there are recent uh, papers, recent uh, reports, um, as the OECD and uh, the International Council of Museums has said that, well, the uh, museums uh, have to introduce this perspective of well-being um, because, uh, well, it, it has to be an objective of the museums to, because it has to be proved to be very beneficial for the human beings. So the first project, uh, Musakthes, was uh, a project on museology and social integration. And it was related to make um, the cultural heritage of the museum, the Prado Museum, um, available or accessible to groups with a special accessibility needs and that, was that were uh, blind, deaf, and inmates. And um, well, that should be made uh, through museographic discourses that was a multidisciplinary team, very large one, and technological uh, development. So um, we wanted to, um, to, to work on this idea of art uh, for all and with a multisensorial um, approach at this uh, technology acceptance model that Kowai is going to, to talk at afterwards. Um, well, we work a lot during these uh, years in uh, the detecting the specific needs of and interests of the target groups to create different applications. Ko is going to show also uh, what our group uh, developed uh, at the time and to promote this international um, network in uh, giving them, um, um, uh, well, well, we work on different issues. Uh, we did a seminars, uh, uh, training sessions. Uh, in, uh, there was an international conference that Antonella was there uh, in, in this conference too. And, um, it was a very, uh, I think, very interesting project in, in the end with, um, we, we can see, you can see here that it was the University, uh, well, Com Universidad Complutense, Universidad Autónoma, UNED, working in that with, uh, as I said, a huge um, a diversity of profiles. But our group, um, uh, together with all these uh, more than 80 researchers in eight research uh, group, uh, work in, on some specific things. And that were this were uh, to create inclusive experiences to share, and um, I want to just be focused now in one of the things I, I loved most from the uh, the project that was to create experiences multisensorial approach and multisensorial um, approach for everyone. I mean, not just for people with a special a special a, a special needs, but to to see how we could um, present art uh, under a multisensorial approach. So you could touch, hear, taste, smell. And so everyone could have some experience with the five senses. That was um, Musakthes with the five senses and Brother Museum with the five senses. And we uh, developed different types of um, seminars and each one um, focused on one of the senses. For instance, uh, there was, um, if we talked about um, touching, uh, well, we had um, explanations of experts about ex sculptures and paintings in which touch was very much uh, what was very important. But also um, there uh, in the session, there were uh, the possibility of touch things. So there were blind uh, participants, for instance, and we could uh, approach them to what we were talking about by touching. That was the same, for instance, uh, regarding... Um, uh, well, uh, the, the taste, tasting things. So uh, we talk about, uh, well, all the tasted things that are in art, and for instance, in paintings. And we had also the experience, the real experience of some meal that were, uh, that was in on a painting and was uh, made in, uh, uh, to, to be tasted by the audience. Or music. I mean, there is the hidden music in many paintings and there was a group that was working on making this uh, Haydn music real and, and, and to, to, um, um, to play the music that was in all the paintings and to make this uh, multisensorial experience, as I said, in this sense with music. And also, why not smell? I mean, to smell all those things that are on painting. So this, that was an approach to see that we can uh, have an approach, uh, an inclusive approach to art 
um, in different ways that uh, we can uh, feel not only those people that uh, have um, disabilities, but everyone can feel the art with the five senses. Uh, we work, of course, with uh, open educational resources that are there available um, regarding the different topics that uh, were um, developed in Musaktes. And, well, we also were in, in the social uh, media with them. And I'm going to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Kola. Thank you. Thank you, Angeles. Kova. Okay. You have the floor, Kova. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So regarding uh, technology, we we in this uh, big group of Inadoc, we are also some engineers. So um, one colleague, uh, Ana Garcia, that is not with us today, unfortunately, she developed a model. Um, to to um, to show how uh, semantic te technologies can link uh, with open linked data coming up from the museum. So uh, we de develop a prototype uh, for helping historians to develop uh, stories and gather uh, automatically uh, related objects that can be found in the open linked uh, data world. Uh, we also uh, developed some surveys because in this um, project, we developed some um, uh, mobile applications that I'm going to show you uh, in a while. So we first uh, developed a survey based on the technology acceptance uh, model um, in order to, to predict uh, how, how you know, these, uh, these mobile applications could be perceived uh, of uh, their use usefulness and also of the easy of uh, use. So we developed a very um, um, big survey. Uh, we had nearly uh, 300 uh, answers and um, we were just focused on, on the use of what we were uh, developing in this, in this context. So about the use of mobile devices, uh, we wanted to know about, you know, the specific use in people with disabilities. So we asked them about, you know, how much uh, they were aware uh, in the common use of tablets or smartphones. And um, so they all use uh, most of the, uh, at least in Spain, we, we have um, the ONTE Foundation that help, helps a lot all the users with disabilities to, you know, to have their own devices and mobiles and also very well personalized. So um, that was not a, an issue. And we also asked about the implications of, you know, the easy of uh, connectivity, because if you want to um, do, you know, uh, some itineraries, for example, uh, within the museum, so you, you need to, uh, to have some wireless connections and, and also some um, disabilities, um, independent on your disability, uh, maybe the connection via N NFC, for example, technologies is, is very um, uh, good for them, you know, to, to get some augmented reality information, for example, or for navigating. Uh, also, we asked about the attitude uh, towards the inclusion uh, through gam gamification activities. Uh, and um, it, it was uh, a point uh, that we saw that there were no really a common use of this kind of uh, technologies and there was a lot of confusion about uh, virtual reality and augmented reality technologies. So, uh, uh, yeah, we, we decided that there were a lot of, uh, you know, future work to, to do on that. So, as uh, Angeles uh, mentioned, um, before we worked on developing some kind of multisensorial, multisensorial training itineraries uh, inside the museum, so um, we try to, you know, make all kinds of uh, things, uh, you know, all put together and, and trying to make like a, like a really engaging user experience. That was our, our objective, our main objective. So we kind of develop uh, some learning activities that could be developed in the museum and also out of the museum and connecting with the social network, for example. So we started with the, this um, painting in, in Museo del Prado, La Anunciación, and uh, we uh, tried to abstract, uh, like like a starting point of, of the from the painting, 
and so we took up so some uh, main characters right to relate all the um, different <clears throat> uh, objects that appear in the painting uh, and relate them with with uh, senses so we we uh, start to develop like a narrative elaboration of, of uh, storytelling uh, of the painting and thinking also on 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 blind people, uh, so we finally prepare multimedia script that was inserted in the in the mobile applications, and finally we add the content, the 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 uh, speak loca uh, locations, and and also the ambient sounds and and the gamification. So um, yeah, we try to to gather all the um, all the aspects uh, and and be very precise on which gamification. You know, and related to what part of the painting, and where to to smell, and and where to uh, make the user with the mobile app to stop, and then uh, maybe touch something or go to uh, some external location, for example, the botanic garden, and try to find out, you know, the some of the uh, of the uh, of the flowers or you know the plants that could be inside the the, the painting, no. So uh, here you can see how it looked like um, we with the with the mobile uh, devices. You could you have to you know focus on the uh, wireframe that uh, looked like the um, uh, the painting, and suddenly the three D uh, dimension figure appeared. So uh, uh, we could just uh, you know try of um, move it around and, and take a look you know inside this uh, very very nice three uh, D three uh, dimension. Um, uh, figure uh, and we also uh, developed some uh, tactile and and also 3D printed uh, resources. So we developed some puzzles and I don't know some you know uh, nested uh, puzzles and and things to to to, to start to yeah have a, a good time you know and play around with the um, uh, with with the complete idea of the. Uh, uh, of the painting, and we also uh, developed some stuffed uh, silhouettes and, and some Braille reproductions that can be also touched, you know, uh, uh, for the uh, blind people. Uh, um, we that was our main work was uh, devoted to this uh, La Anunciación uh, painting, but we also did other experiments, small experiments. Uh, we took uh, one uh, painting from Goya and. Uh, we produced a small um, mobile application, but devoted to uh, uh, users with uh, cognitive disabilities. So we focused on these um, uh, kind of uh, children uh, type of drawings and also the easy reading aspect. Um, we developed another uh, prototype uh, for trying to use the beacons. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of this IoT uh, elements that can, you know, uh, give, they are wireless elements that can be placed uh, close to the paintings and they can also give some augmented uh, reality information to, to the user. Um, and we also uh, end up with another um, uh, mobile uh, prototype uh, uh, focused on, on another uh, painting from, from Goya and also trying to make this was more an engineering um, uh, the prototype for, for the framework to, to make, you know, to kind of uh, help us to develop different kind of uh, 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 specific uh, uh, mobile applications for, for different paintings. Okay, so this was just more like a, like a framework for a template for developing other mobile applications. And, um, and the other um, a project we wanted to talk about is the Spectrum project. We are uh, this year ending it. It's about making adjustments uh, to the museum environment to help them to be more autism friendly. Uh, so we are developing some guidance uh, for, for helping all the museums or staff from the museums uh, for achieving this. Um, we focused on the light lift experience. Uh, we understand that the users with um, uh, with autism uh, go to the museum, such as any other people. So they go with their um, parents, with their relatives, their families, their friends. 
So we want to involve them all at the various stage of the, the process and, you know, try to give them some guidelines uh, how to um, make the setup of the museums more comfortable for, for these people and avoid, you know, the, the segregation of these users, uh, you know, aside in, in, in some places. So um, we, um, we thought about developing uh, a MOOC uh, as part of the project. Um, as uh, Angeles mentioned, at UNED, we've been very fond of open education movement. So uh, we had already joined uh, uh, all the open, uh, uh, yeah, the ideas of the MOOCs and, and, and also uh, um, open courseware uh, since the 90s. Uh, we also believe on the importance of uh, developing uh, open resources with creative common lic licenses. So we have uh, this uh, UNED Abierta portal uh, with uh, more than 200 open courses uh, since uh, 2012, and some of them are already in English, not only in Spanish. So we um, designed this uh, NanoMOOC, as a nano learning experience for, for Spectrum, uh, it can be maybe mm, devoted to, to museum staff. So we just wanted to give the participants uh, the opportunity to explore and learn uh, key competency on, on this um, museum friendly, uh, sorry, uh, autism friendly museums. Uh, our portal is based on the e EDX open code. So, um, we have, you know, uh, this this uh, idea of, of a very tiny, tiny um, learning activity with a workload of maybe 10 hours and, and of course, completely self-paced. Uh, in the project, we have been also delivering other uh, products, for example, um, very nice guidelines and also a specific check checklist uh, that was leader by a uh, Faro um, company in Belgium. So uh, with the general guidelines that uh, we have also this um, English partner um, outside in pathways that, that, that you know, help us to, to develop uh, this nice uh, guidelines. So we try to map, uh, you know, the, the, the information on the NOOC and, and all the chapters of the NOOC and follow uh, these guidelines and, and help to uh, the, the future uh, users of the NOOC to fill in the, the checklist and see if their museums are friendly or not and what do they have to do. So at UNED, we are very care of uh, quality assurance. So we have this, uh, um, we have developed all this information about, you know, the main components and what about the videos and the video pills and the self-assessment activities and how to include some complementary uh, materials. So here you can see what we just have produced uh, the, the, the previous month uh, in February. In February, So we just um, got to end up with all the re video recordings. Uh, you can see on the right side our uh, nice uh, uh, setups, you know, uh, the, the recording rooms. And um, as we mentioned, both Angeles and I, we have been very active on assessing through these um, quality uh, labels. So uh, we have, uh, you know, imported all, all our expertise on, on the quality assurance of, of, the, of the, this NOOC. And just to finish our presentation, uh, um, our role in the in this in the projects um, also it's uh, technological. So uh, in one of the meetings that we have just uh, made in Madrid, we we went to a specific museum that it's uh, it was very challenging for us. It's devoted to to science uh, learning and it has a lot of uh, self experimentation and also we could kind of develop some object-based learning and sensorization. Uh, also, there were a lot of information in Braille, touchable, and we could, could also feel, we did a, a workshop on electricity, so we could also feel the electricity uh, by ourselves, and it was uh, also very uh, frightening, but also uh, exciting. 
Okay, so um, those are some of the uh, uh, publications that we have uh, delivered uh, uh, for these projects. Uh, so with this, I, I think I have, uh, uh, I can uh, my presentation. Thanks for your listening. Thank you, Kovalonga, uh, for the presentation. Well, Kovalonga and Nahil is for the for your presentation. Well, we have seen um, a non well uh, uh, the, the the presentation of uh, well the introductions to this new, one new project and ongoing projects, and we have explored this um, this idea of uh, uh, widening access, uh, well, and participation as well, but uh, mostly access uh, to to, mu to the museum experience. And so, uh, in this sense, opening it for everyone, for all, in, in this sense. Uh, uh, we will not start uh, a, a second part of our webinar today, which will be uh, based on a, on a discussion, on a panel discussion uh, between the speakers. And, uh, and I'll start by Antonia. Um, exploring uh, probably another side of these uh, of these experiences, which is uh, the participatory culture. So we've seen here a focus on inclusion, a focus on access, on widening access, but we are also uh, witnessing uh, from the part of museums uh, a very important cultural transformation, and I'm talking about the organizational culture of the museums themselves, a transformation in order to open up but open up uh, in the sense also of involving um, the, the new public, the, the audiences in this sense, the visitors, the visitors and the still non, not visitors and the past visitors. So creating a community of users, as Antonella was uh, saying, uh, that uh, actually uh, co-curate the, the museum's collection. Um, and this sense, so uh, the, there is this focus on opening uh, on making it a hybrid and ubiquitous experience, a personalized one as well. Uh, and in that sense, this, the, that personalization links with the involving everyone uh, in the, uh, to participate in the co-construction uh, of, of not only of identity, uh, but um, uh, of the museum experience as such. Uh, but we, because we're not talking just of art museums or science museums or, or science and technology museums or technology museums. We could also talk about sport museums and, and other uh, different sorts of museums, which now we have. And so from your standpoint, Anto Antonia, with your um, uh, tremendous experience in digital storytelling uh, with, and museums, uh, what is your, um, your experience on, on, on this um, development of uh, these uh, museums, this opening up for participation that museums are, uh, are following. Antonio? Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio. And actually, thank you to all the beautiful, wonderful colleagues, because uh, each of the presentation was actually touching upon this very specific um, theme that you just highlighted. And actually, uh, Kova's uh, slide on co-production was somehow uh, condensing the meaning of this uh, opening up uh, the, 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 the co-creative space, so museum as co-creative space, but also uh, Ankeles, when you were talking about uh, this uh, connection between arts and well-being and appreciation of beauty. So even that, the appreciation of beauty is, of course, something that has uh, an impact on an individual, but is also something that needs a safe space for for sharing those uh, those connections somehow. So and and Antonella, of course, I, I'm taking note. I've been taking notes during your presentation because I was trying to find the thread, and actually I found that thread actually in the participation, the participatory element, uh, probably because that is what I'm most interested in with my digital storytelling hat, but also because all these projects we've been uh, learning about today, they, I think they have a common thread that is around participation, co-creation and co-production. And um, something <clears throat> very important, Antonio and Antonella, you both uh, mentioned this, is about creating a shared social memory. And of course, you were mentioning the values of Eden uh, as a collective, but this is of course embraced by museum at the very moment, especially in times of crisis. 
And of course, COVID-19 was a, a crisis we all were linked to because we all experienced this. And of course, as you said, it was an accelerator for this opening up of museums as spaces for co-production. The other thing I was thinking about, the other aspect I was thinking about is actually creating a safe space because co-production can actually happen only when the audience, audiences, users, they actually believe and feel to be in a safe space because the expression of creativity and um, uh, personal understanding of our common and shared heritage, of course, requires also uh, an attitude. I think Angeles was talking about attitude as well as an important factor for participation, uh, the attitude of people for listening. So in my experience of digi using digital storytelling with large museums, especially I've been working with the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access, who was born as a, as a digital unit. In fact, now is the, uh, is a, a new unit for the, the, the technology, the education and technology within the Smithsonian. So they created this large a database of museum resources. But since the beginning, they thought of those resources as an opportunity for users, participants, and audiences to create their own collections. And you mentioned the keywords of co-curation. So co-production of knowledge starts from co-creation as well. And um, when we think about ways in which we can apply digital storytelling to expand this notion, this, uh, this opportunities for co-creation, collaboration, and co-curation, we actually think of digital storytelling and other participatory techniques as a way of somehow blurring the boundaries between the knowledge consumers, which actually was the way in which we were used to think about museum visitors, uh, for probably until before the pandemic, the knowledge implementers and the knowledge producer. So I think that now we are somehow transitioning across these three different categories. And um, following, of course, the principle of democratizing the access, we are also democratizing the participation to the production of knowledge, the co-production of knowledge, by somehow creating those safe spaces. And uh, for what Angeles was saying, also generating a very positive impact on those audiences. So I think all those aspects are somehow in a big cloud, uh, where I think uh, I've got a bit of, technical mind as Kova, I always think of themes as keywords that become bigger or smaller depending on the priorities. And I think that the pandemic uh, taught us that the priority is actually the connection of all these key themes together. And uh, so that we actually navigate in this cloud of those key terms we've been all exploring together and actually learning about from your brilliant, brilliant presentations. I think all those aspects are really, really connected to each other. Well, thank you, Antonia. Do you like to comment, uh, uh, Antonella, Kova, Angeles? Kova, you want to comment? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Antonia. Uh, yeah, I, I very much like Antonia. I think it's very important this idea of the um, storytelling. Telling. Um, I think the people, the, the way we um, uh, we feel, the way we keep the emotions, uh, the way we really um, have an, a nice experience and emotionally engaged uh, comes also from the the sensory aspect and also from the storytelling. Uh, for instance, for example, for us, it was very important to give an importance on the narratives, uh, thinking on the users uh, with um, with blind disability. Uh, and, and at that time, you start to think yourself, you know, the way you look at the painting or a piece of art and how you try to connect um, what aspects of, of that piece of art um, can be linked to your emotions or previous experiences. And then we try to develop the narrative, but not in an objective way, you know, not saying, okay, this is a painting, you can see the, uh, you know, the angel and you can see the uh, Maria, the Virgin Maria, and, and there is a plant there. No, no, uh, we try to and make a, a narrative, you know, exploring the painting, but trying to get the connection with the smelling and maybe previous uh, experiences uh, in the users. That, that, that was 
our starting point, you know, to trying to develop a nice itinerary that were conducted through the mobile application. Hmm. Well, thank you, Kova. Kova. Um, uh, Antonella. Also, uh, yes. yes. Um, Rene, <laughs> thank you, Antonio. Uh, um, what uh, Antonia mentioned and highlighted um, as regards the different kind of activities that many museums can can carry out related to storytelling and especially to digital storytelling, and in particular the Smithsonian, um, Antonia had a, a, an incredible. Uh, experience working together and actually she is actually I think working still with uh, the Smithsonian is really um, consistent with what we um, would like to do as regards the possibility to use um, critically uh, any kind of, of technology. Because technology, especially in the work that is represented um, by um, uh, digital storytelling at uh, uh, the Smithsonian uh, um, organization, uh, is uh, directly related to the possibility and the poten potentiality, I would say, that the digital field has um, in view of empowering the museums uh, uh, to facilitate uh, um, accessibility, inclusion, participation, actually. Because what we also try to develop within the European project is uh, um, the idea of... Um, 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 you know, meaning, uh, well-being as participation. So well-being is a wide, a wide concept and we try to interpret it in the widest way uh, possible. So not only, uh, of course, it's related to health, it's related to um, accessibility, it's related to um, the possibility to help those with disabilities, but is related to any kind of marginalization, any, any kind of displacement. Uh, any kind of uh, um, you know seclusion from the active life of society. So so what um, is um, linked to the activity that um, Antonia was mentioning and this possibility of really being involved uh, and of having this support um, performed by technology uh, in, in participation, in, in involvement uh, is absolutely vital and pivotal in our action. Uh, what we would like to do, and I hope that you know all the people listening to what we are saying today will keep in touch and, and participate in our in our activities, um, is um, the possibility to develop um, also measurement tools. Uh, to understand really what kind of uh, impact can can have our action through through mm, you know the different uh, um, ways of using technology to um, have uh, inclusion really realized. Well, thank you, thank you, Antonella. Um, I would now uh, ask Angelis to comment as well, but I will uh, add something else. Uh, as well to the question, uh, which is the, this element of um, how the, 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 the museum experience uh, as a learning experience, well, museum experience has become a learning experience, but more than a learning experience and a discovery experience, it also be become part of your own um, uh, identity construction in a sense. Uh, and we, we have now um, uh, it's, it's becoming common, the use of crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. Well, uh, a, a number of, um, uh, of um, processes that involve the community in, um, in building the connection, in curating the collections, and uh, in, in uh, also co-constructing the meaning of, of, 
of the collections as well. So in that sense, um, and this starts from early age. We see now children uh, having access by digital um, re uh, resources or devices uh, to the possibility of, uh, um, build, uh, of, of writing their own uh, um, museum guide and things like that. So uh, there is a sense of co-ownership. So the museum is now also something that I am owner as well. I'm part of it. And the, uh, the, the, the message of the museum is also something that it relates to me because I was part of that story and part of the, the writing of that story. Angeles, how can or how is open education actually contributing to this? Well, I think that open education is an, a, a huge advance in, in, in humanity in some sense because what it, it gets is this um, this goal, you no? Know, or for instance, uh, that we are um, uh, well trying to cope with now that uh, education should be open for everyone because uh, that uh, that's the main thing we can do for a human being is to uh, get them all the tools that uh, he or she can have to develop of their own selves. So uh, open education is um, um, in institutions such as mine, of course, uh, is working on um, uh, trying to get uh, as much people as possible involved in education, in continuous education all along their lives. So that's not only related to be a graduate or to be a PhD or to be, you know, a master in something, but uh, we need to be in contact with um, our, our people or with ourselves. And it is, it's this idea of Dylan that uh, we should be as universities, for instance, um, uh, um, like uh, partners all along the along the lives of people. So we need to give them the opportunity to continue uh, learning in those things that are in a personalized way they need more. And part of that uh, should be um, uh, those that are related to art, to the museum experience, to these that are open as to culture, because this is, as you say, this is something that is... Um, uh, well, that, that, that we need to feel that is part of ourselves. So as Antonia says also, I think it's some, I mean, we need to think also from a psychological perspective that uh, if we open uh, museums and we open education to understand and to, and to work uh, and to learn uh, about the culture and about the, the evolution of culture, um, we are going to learn about ourselves. This is something very important. And something I, I mentioned before that, um, research what it, uh, and it means uh, or, or what it says is that that makes uh, makes people flourishing so that, that that's something very important at least to psychologists i mean is to people grow up to people um uh, feel that they can have a wider perspective in their lives and it's not just flourishing but i i also think that this is very important related to healing to the power of healing that art has and not only under an individual perspective, but as Antonia says, as a collective perspective, now that we are under, again, under uh, a fear, a fear experience and under uh, uncertainty in, in, this, in this world, no? this appreciation of beauty of what um, the human being can develop, not just war, but on, on this side, what human being has developed along the history in terms of beauty, and in terms of making ourselves better, this is something we have to open to the knowledge of uh, what we have developed along the history. So um, yeah, I think open education contributes to that uh, and it should be part of the museums too. So uh, I, I would ask you, because I'm not an expert in museums. So um, in, the, in our past meeting, uh, Antonella, remember when we were in the Thyssen Museum, we were in the education area. I remember area. very well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that there was this discussion you mentioned about that uh, there is a discussion about what a museum should be or what is the definition of museum uh, nowadays. So uh, that's, a, that's a thing that um, made me think, <laughs> think a lot because uh, there was not a... Uh, uh, um, I mean, a unique concept or even nowadays uh, with all these things we are talking about? No, there, there's not actually. And there's a big discussion there. In fact, the ICOM, the International Council of Museums, are, as we were saying when we met in Madrid, um, um, has been talking about the um, definition 
of museum um, over, you know, uh, I would say almost a decade, um, in the sense that uh, already in 2000, 2016, uh, they um, really focused on the need to revise the uh, original uh, definition of museums uh, of museum that was developed by by ICOM and that mainly um, uh, expresses the, um, the the functions of museums uh, as um, yes those that are are related to the preservation the research um, also. Um, the, uh, of course, the, the, um, the restoration of the objects uh, and also, of course, uh, the educational side uh, related to uh, the use of museums and the um, enjoyment uh, part uh, related to uh, the um, participation in museums activity. But of course, there's uh, um, a huge part uh, that, that is that of the social value of museums that is not so clearly stated in, in that uh, definition. And since uh, the main general conference uh, in, um, in Milan that took place in 2016, uh, ICOM decided to start a new committee uh, devoted to the revision of that uh, definition, which is particularly important because that definition um, is, uh, you know, the main reference that we hold uh, all over the world uh, involved or interested in what uh, um, is museum, um, museum work because you know we can say just museum educational activities or we can say just public engagement activities or we can say um, you know just uh, uh, those involved in uh, preservation or conservation and so on and so forth um, the social value of museums uh, regard all of us all of us uh, and of course uh, 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 if we think of our role as educators, of course, we, uh, we my view, must be interested in what um, a museum uh, could do. Mm, museums are actually, uh, could be, should be extended spaces of what is the educational, um, of any educational, um, activity uh, as we were saying they are, they, they um, show the whole humanity development through the ages so they are the, our identity is there so it's it's very important and uh, you know it should be our main interest to know more about uh, about museums and to know more about how they develop their activities. So the issue of the, of the definition is a major one. And it is, but it is still under discussion. And I think that in this new main conference, because they, as I said, they started with a new committee devoted to the new definition um, in 2016. In 2019, when we had the other main uh, conference, uh, general conference in Kyoto, um, the discussion was really uh, hard and they couldn't reach uh, an agreement. Uh, and so, uh, on this next conference that will take place in Prague, um, hopefully this this August, let's uh, really wish that uh, that could be an event uh, where everyone can participate uh, from all over the world. Uh, um, on that occasion in Prague this August, 
we really hope that a new shared definition of a museum can be there and could include also the um, importance of the social value of museums. Thank you, Antonella. Yeah. I, I would say there that uh, um, is a thinking in educa on education on a, the broadest perspective. Yeah. It's, so not knowledge, but also it's in the transforming power uh, as uh, educating a human being. But I mean, as the broadest pers perspective, because if we only focused on knowledge, uh, we wouldn't be on the right point, I think. So uh, Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Also, because as I always say, um, to my students in particular, um, it's important to start um, a museum activities working with uh, uh, this idea of establishing a relation with the object at, at the museum um, without uh, being aware of, of, you know, there's no need of being so much, at least so much aware of the historical, uh, artistic historical um, contents related to that specific object. And, but after this first encounter, um, even the most, uh, you know, uh, um, native um, users um, get also that effect of you know, wanting and desiring to know more about the artistic, the historical and artistic issues related to that object. So the cultural impact is naturally there. And that's very, very important because we, we really need to develop many different cross-sectional skills and actually, together with Antonia, we developed a project, a European project related to the power of museums in developing cross-sectional skills um, uh, in, in primary school children, but uh, the whole um, society benefit from this kind of um, development. Well, Antonella and uh, Hilles, uh, thank you for this uh, shared discussion because this was this is also part of this participatory culture that we're promoting. <laughs> uh, uh, we're approaching the end. I, I've just um, uh, asked uh, several times to our uh, participants to share questions or ask questions if they if they wanted, but uh, apparently they were not. So I'll um, I'll um... sorry, Antonio. They are too shy today, so. Well, <laughs> we need to, some ice well, breaking. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll have a, another. We'll have to organize an, another webinar <laughs> for that. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll probably uh, challenge Antonia for a, a last question, and then we'll uh, wrap up. Uh, Antonia, uh, we have uh, we have been discussing and until uh, and um, this exchange between Antonella. And Angel has mentioned exactly that the transformational value um, uh, of the of the museum learning experience, but uh, we haven't uh, tackled still, and I will challenge you there for the uh, challenge you for the for, for that in just a, a few minutes on how open education is also uh, having a transformational impact on the uh, um, uh, museum educators and on the museum curators as well. Uh, MOOCs, uh, for instance, MOOCs and Open Educational Resources, as Angel has also mentioned, are now being used for um, staff training in museums, for curators training, for educators training as well, um, and, and digital storytelling as well. So um, from your own experience, um, how, uh, what can you share with us about this? How, how is also uh, museum educators and museum curators uh, um, transforming in terms of their uh, of their profession uh, because of this opening up uh, um, uh, in, in, in uh, of the educational process, their educational process. Antonia? Thanks for the question, Antonia, which actually is very crucial and, and it's linked to what we were saying earlier about impact as well, because I think that this is one of the most is one of the fastest impact that we can probably witness within museums. That is actually how 
uh, the availability of this large number of educational resources is making educators and curators aware of these tools. And then they are not only using those tools and resources, but they're also reapplying those approaches in their own practice. So as again, uh, as an example, uh, if you go into the homepage of the Smithsonian Learning Lab, you will see that they have added uh, a new part, a new section scrolling down in the homepage about how they deliver uh, e-learning now. So it's not just about using accessible resources but, it's, it's resources, but it's also making sure that in the meantime, educators are changing their practice and they are delivering in a different way uh, training opportunities for uh, different types of audience and for other educators. And as you were saying earlier, they are also bridging formal, non-formal education even more, because of course, those resources are somehow crafted by higher education institutions. They are used within non-formal educa education institutions, and they recreate different types of open educational resources to deliver their own training to teachers in colleges and other institutions. So it's a very nice loop. It's a very positive story that, as you said, the COVID pandemic probably uh, accelerated quite, um, uh, it's quite tangible and visible, and visible as, a, as an outcome of the pandemic. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Antonia. And I cannot um, close without actually giving the floor to the to the, our participants. Uh, we do have one question by our friend and uh, Eden's uh, fellow, uh, Alfredo Soeiro, who actually asked, how can we build an online museum community? Any suggestions? Uh, who would like to, to answer this? Antonella Kova? Cover. <laughs> you have the floor. Please, From please, a technological please. point of view, it's quite easy. So uh, we can <laughs> yes. get help with the uh, social networks. And, uh, you know, I, I think the point is the, the humanistic uh, uh, input, you know, and, and, you know, how we can not only connect, but all, also uh, transmit, you know, to... to to the rest of us, uh, how we feel, and, and when when we, uh, you know, go to the museum and we see all these magnificent uh, pieces of art, and how you know how how we how those pieces of art transform our way of being, you know, and how we enhance, as Angel has mentioned before, you know, how we get happier, how we get you know um, improved because we have learned something, and how we are transformed. So the, the technological side is quite easy, but I think we have a lot to, to work on the <laughs> human being side. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right, Kova. Uh, there's, uh, um, I mean, as uh, also Antonia mentioned, uh, over the lockdown, over the pandemic, uh, certain aspects have been, you know, underlined and accelerated. So many, many institutions, many museum institutions. Uh, um, tried hard over that time to support the community creation or, uh, you know, online, of course. Many different museums, uh, I'm thinking of, for instance, of the Getty Museum or uh, that, you know, prompted different activities asking uh, participants uh, and uh, the users uh, to tell uh, about their own experience of certain certain objects. I'm thinking of the National Gallery in Washington who developed different programs to support uh, online uh, experiences with especially uh, centered on visual thinking strategies to develop cross-sectional skills like critical thinking and so on. Uh, so there are uh, strategies uh, put in place to support this kind of community creation uh, thanks to technology. In my view, um, when you work online and, or, or, you know, all of us here are, uh, you know, there are, there are many, many different uh, important experts here. Uh, the most important thing is to um, support these kind of activities with a, a frequent uh, 
uh, use of that um, strategy or anyway, uh, a follow-up activity related to the strategy that you put in place in order to support community participation. Then as Kovadonga said, mm, there are there are many technological opportunities that can be can be used, can be put in place, and that can be uh, effective. Um, and there are also many uh, colleagues uh, from different areas that are studying the issue of digital humanities. That is a huge uh, area. Uh, uh, at the moment, all over different universities. So, so there's lots of work. In my view, another point um, is to uh, develop and create, um, you know, groups where um, uh, you know experts from the university side, both in technology and of course in the different uh, disciplines that are involved. Um, other colleagues from the museum side, uh, other uh, from stakeholders uh, from, you know, the, 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 also uh, the, the productive part of society. Uh, and the local policy uh, decision makers should be part on. So really, you know, community of practice should be developed in order to support um, the definition, the creation and the uh, sustainability of certain communities and of communities that could be helpful for the whole society. Thank you very much, Antonella Angeles, and then Antonia for a final word. Yeah, but, well, very briefly, I think it's um, quite interesting. As um, Kova said, uh, there is no problem with the technology side, but as in the uh, uh, in, in, in the educational field, uh, we need the, uh, the the competences. So uh, we also have to think that we uh, should be aware that we can create another digital divide in, in art experience and museums. Because uh, we need to get people involved and to have the uh, the required competences for uh, making use and participating in online museums. And so it's not just digitalization of art, but we are moving towards um, digital art, which is something new also. And and people should know how to start working in creating uh, digital art. So yeah, that's uh, for the education side. Thank you, Angeles. And we're not talking just about art museums, but art museums as well. <laughs> Antonia, you have the, the floor. Just, just very briefly, the, uh, if there is just one thing that I learned from digital storytelling as a practice, it's actually I enhanced my attitude to listening. And I think that's a key aspect that we should consider when we think about how to create a community. So community is about collaboration and intrinsic to collaboration. I think we should all work more on this uh, human attitude of listening to make those collaborations more effective. Well, thank you very much, Antonia. Um, uh, let me just, um, uh, well, thank you. And uh, I think we are all uh, uh, joining the same feeling of happiness and well-being uh, in this session because this was a fruitful and uh, a great discussion. Uh, I think we've tackled um, imp very important aspects uh, uh, and this is also inspirational as some, um, some of our participants have written in the chat board as well. Thank you very much, uh, Antonella, Covadonga, Angeles and Antonia. Well, <laughs> I think... A, a, a big hand for you uh, and a big hand also for the participants and for the older ones who have shared with us this discussion and shared with us as well their thoughts, reflections and, and comments. Uh, it was a, a great pleasure for me. Uh, let me just, uh, on behalf of everyone uh, in the panel and on Eden, uh, to wish you a, a very good weekend. Uh, um, well, uh, a more peaceful uh, future for Europe and above all uh, that the values uh, that uh, Eden stands for and that Open Educator stands for uh, will of course um, endure. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank Have you. a nice weekend and uh, thank you for uh, having been with us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you really.
Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you a lot.